Today, we're going to talk about how long does it take to get into ketosis to see the a physical freaking benefits. Welcome everyone to my humble channel where it's going to be minus two degrees, but that's okay. And I'm wearing a friggin' snow bib on the inside of my place, but that's okay. Because the camper is like made out of cardboard. How long? How long? How long? How long? Now, how long it takes to get into ketosis is also the indication of how long it takes to seal the gut wall or how long it takes to have energy or how long it takes to drop body fat or how long it takes to balance your thyroid hormones and sleep better and I get this question all day every day in my consultations and people literally want me to tell them the date the time the hour that all the success is going to happen and that is impossible as I have this pu this puppy has two gears it's either sleep or drive me crazy let's get on with it by the way if you cannot hear me that's too bad because my microphone I've got that little clip on one is not charged and my heaters blasting how long does it take everyone is different but I can kind of explain how the evolution goes if you choose to try to drive ketosis now obviously a ketogenic diet is not a high protein diet it's a high fat diet you're trying to retrain the brain to understand a new fuel source or gasoline to drive the car people don't understand this you don't count calories you don't eat a bunch of protein irregardless of what you've heard on these other channels I gotta like undo all of the damage information that y'all are getting that just aren't, they're not telling you the whole story. People have low stomach acid, they have chronic dehydration, they have low estrogen or estrogen dominance with estrone. Men are having dehydrotestosterone, too high levels of estrogen and all of these things, and cortisol, and high blood sugar, and insulin resistance, this is stuff I talk about all the time. The problem is that all of those things, they're all connected. If you hurt your elbow here, your body can release C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory response, and then doctors try to measure it, and they're like, oh my God, you're so inflamed. Well, you could be inflamed or you could just have bumped your elbow real hard and releasing CRP. So the lifetime that it takes to damage the body is what you've got to factor in when you're trying to do those mathematical equations of weight loss, because I'm going to tell you right now, it's not about dropping your calories and doing cardio that that's not going to happen. And doing a carnivore diet does not mean eating a bunch of protein, cutting out all the plants, because plants are so bad, they're awful. You all sound like vegans now. Cutting out the plants and then like, you're just gonna be perfect. I get these people that are like, oh, I've done carnivore for 18 months and I'm amazing. And I'm like, keep telling yourself that. I mean, people get super culty with these dumb diets. You have to look at all the stuff in between. Blood sugar stabilization. Are you using ketones? Why is that not a conversation on these other channels that if you're doing a high protein carnivore diet, you're never going to be in ketosis. I don't care what your urine strips say, check your blood sugar. This is something that I preach nonstop. You also have to consider stress where you live. If you're drinking municipal water, because if you are, you're going to be more inflamed for various reasons, most people know this. The inflammation in your body must be low for ketones to rise. 
because if you're stressed, if your body's stressed, blood sugar spikes instead of ketones. The other things are your mentality and your lifestyle. If you go to bed late, I don't care, go to bed late, body's not going to repair like you want it to. Ketones are made in the liver and the liver needs rest at night. People, your body must rest at night. I don't care if you're in your bed in, for eight hours. It is the depth in which you sleep to release growth hormone and to produce ketones. This little monster's coming. It's the depth. And a lot of people, they're like, oh, I sleep amazing. And then when I have these consultations, they don't sleep amazing. They're waking up three times or they don't remember their dreams or they're not dropping their body fat or their blood sugar. That's a huge indication of not sleeping deep enough is when your blood sugar is super high at night. So how do we know if you're going to be in ketosis? Now, the solutions are go to bed early. I know I've said it a million times go to bed early. Do not drink coffee. If you're not going to give it to a child, you shouldn't be drinking it yourself. It's very difficult on your digestive tract. It's very acidic. You have this very thin mucus layer, very soft skin in your digestive tract. A lot of people don't know that they're lowering their stomach acids and creating a host of opportunistic parasites or candida to overgrow in the presence. And the caffeine stimulates the imbalance of the nastiness of bad microbes. So don't drink coffee and don't drink black tea, green tea, or matcha. Get rid of it. What do I drink? Water. What the frack? Are people still human anymore? We should be like hunter gatherers in the context of using nature, maximizing the potential of nature to heal ourselves and to become one with the world, really, with the planet. Oh, he's hyper. Sorry for the noise. Sorry for how loud the sound is. Sorry for the dog, but let's continue. Go to bed early. Ground. Grounding. Literally, when spring comes, sit down on the ground. You need vitamin D. Body's not going to sleep deep unless you have D. And I don't mean supplemental toxic D. I mean from what you eat, like butter and egg yolks, if you can tolerate them, and getting some kind of sunlight. You're not going to get a lot of D, but go outside and let the sun hit your face even in the winter time. There's so much noise in this video, but I don't care. I'll just get really close and show people that if you take care of yourself at 56, 56 will take care of you. All right, enough with that. Gobbly goop. You have to eat enough fat. The fat is really so important. I've worked with so many people and every time people become fat phobic and eat too much protein or just eat twice a day, blood sugar all over the place, ketones all over the place, body all over the place. But the people who are very, very regiment to their lifestyle and eat high fat, they're like, oh my God, my ketones finally went up. My blood sugar finally dropped. These are the things that help you get into ketosis faster is consistency according to your lifestyle. So for example, working out the timing of your meal. If you skip breakfast and then you run about your day going hundred miles an hour, the body's going to have to pull from itself, eat itself to feed the fledgling brain. It's just the way it works called gluconeo, gluconeogenesis. And a lot of you guys experience this physical reaction to not getting the fuel that you need. And eating high fat alone is not going to fix the problem. It's the type of fat you want. Animal fat. Not olive oil. Not coconut oil. Not MCT oil. Now, those can be advent. Those fats, plant fats, can be advantageous. If your gallbladder is so fracked up in the beginning and you just want to tell your brain you're not starving, but still blood sugar becomes destabilized and so do the ketones. And we want ketones to stabilize. And once you flip over to all animal fat, 
like every noise possible like every noise during this video but I don't care <laughs> I care not as much today I had a consultation with a woman who was eating grass-fed grain finished she goes I just feel terrible all the time on a carnivore diet then I asked her are you grass-fed grass-fed is it dry hung wet hung and she's like uh, it's grass-fed grain finished and I'm like your histamine freak out potential mast cell activation body cannot handle unless it's fully grass fed and if you can't afford it you better budget and, and start saving your pennies if you have mast cell activation so histamine is going to stop the ability to make consistent viable ketones again if you're having a histamine response which is an inflammatory response to most likely food that is coming from a weak gut wall right that's the start of it the whole thing with the processed foods we all we, all, we already know this right the, the the processed foods but the other stuff people don't know the details like kimchi too many carbs sauerkraut if you have a dysbiotic gut and the bacteria is like eh, eh, eh. sauerkraut would be a bad thing you could make you could develop an overgrowth in a certain type of bacteria, let's say like lactobacillus. Now you have an overgrowth and then opportunistic microbes take over the gut. You can't heal faster, which means you can't really get into ketosis faster. So finding fresh meats, finding food that your body agrees with. Be careful for high bacteria fermented foods. If you're not ready, don't force it. That's the thing, people will force their workouts. You will skyrocket your blood sugar if you work out when your body is going through exhaustion, lethargy, fatigue. Don't do that. If you get up, if you have hypoglycemia, for example, and you get up and you eat something small, and then you eat three hours later, and then you eat three hours later. Now, if you eat small things throughout the day, you don't overwhelm the gut, but you're able to stabilize your blood sugar. When the blood sugar is stable and cortisol is stable, then those opportunistic microbes don't freak out and go like, party. Everything matters. So in the beginning, I would stay away from fermented foods. I would be very basic. I'd have salt. I would have high fat healthy fats, like animal fat, with cholesterol, Mwah. I would have moderate to low protein, not too low, 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 but a, mo a moderate on the lower end of protein. Go to bed early, unplug your Wi-Fi, put your phone on airplane mode. I would exercise, I would diaphragmatic breathe, I would do stretching, stretches, I would be mindful and I would have the conversation with myself to be patient. There's a lot of experimentation that's involved in adapting. Most people take about a year because they keep digressing. They'll have some wine or they'll go to a party and they'll have some nuts or some cheese and have an inflammatory reaction and your, your ketones that you were trying to make now digress and the blood sugar becomes destabilized. If you don't believe me, test this theory. Have a food you know your body doesn't agree with and watch your numbers. They just flip-flop all over the place. And it sets you back. If you are consistent and you go to a party and you're like, okay, I'm gonna have some fat before, so I'm not hungry, I'm not gonna eat that garbage food. I'm gonna come home at a decent time. I'm going to breathe, I'm going to stretch, I'm going to bed. And I'm going to be mindful. And I'm going to be eating healthy meats and fat and veg. If you're using vegetable for the minerals, the electrolyte thing is huge. You could do the diet perfect, but if you don't have your sodium, potassium, magnesium balanced, it's not gonna work. If you are dehydrated, heart palpy, muscle crampy, swollen, you're not gonna get into ketosis. It's not gonna be consistent, you'll see these numbers. So balancing your electrolytes is not by taking a powder, opening up the package and putting it in a glass of water. You should primarily start with food food like seaweed or sea moss or avocado or meat broth, not bone broth, meat broth. These are things I mention all the time. I'm just trying to put it together. 
the people who are really strict, and I mean in a positive light, these are the kinds of people that can start adapting within weeks, within weeks. Or the people who've already done low carb for a while or carnivore for a while and they're evolving and then they're like, okay, I'm gonna pull the trigger, trigger. I'm gonna get rid of my coffee, I'm really gonna put my body in balance. These people can adapt quite quickly, especially those who work out. And the ones who work out in a very smart way and they can clear out that high blood sugar because if your blood sugar is unstable or destabilized, you cannot have stable ketones. You just cannot. How long does it take to get into ketosis? It can take three weeks to a year. And it's all dependent on the individual. You can make the ketones and never use them. Remember this, my people. You can make ketones and they can come out in your urine. Just like people who've got issues with absorbing protein. Some people have a hard time absorbing protein. Sometimes people have a gallbladder issue. And that's another thing. Your gallbladder must function properly to be able to break down the fats, to absorb them or, and convert them. The liver must work properly. Go get an ALT or an AST or both to find out what's going on with your liver enzymes. Because if your liver is not functioning properly, you ain't gonna make those ketones. I'm telling you, there's so many things. It's like being on a tightrope and trying to balance everything. The quality of food, the timing of your food, the amount of food, the going to bed early, following, following a circadian rhythm, getting enough vitamin D from the sun, getting enough vitamin D from food, eating organ meats that are not aged, Bacon is aged. Be very careful. That's why I like fresh pork belly. Make sure that your pork is not corn and soy fed, especially if you have histamine intolerance or leaky gut. Know the difference between yellow stool, constipation, and white stool. Because once you learn the difference on the, you know, I think it's like one through five, the numbers indicate the quality of your poop. If you're constipated, you're not going to adapt. If you encourage gut motility, if you encourage the thyroid, and I want to do a video of what I saw on Instagram with this woman. She painted potassium iodide around her thyroid. I was like, that's interesting. See, I don't have a problem with potassium iodide on the skin. I have a problem with it being oral without selenium. Because that's what Lugos is, right? It's potassium iodine, iodide, synthetically, uh, chemically processed in a lab. That's why I like sea iodine. All these things matter. How you sit, how you stand, how you walk, how you breathe. The time you go to bed. The toxic exposure. Are you using, like deodorants and lotions and all of these products makeup that is toxic are you using glassware I just ordered some glass plates because I ain't doing the lead anymore I'm not all of these things matter keep your toxic load low that's why during this cold and flu season so many people are getting sick because their immune system is gutted because they go to the market and buy stuff where they're not looking at the quality control or they're not looking for butchers or true organic produce to get their food from. And I hope this helps because it's time for me to go because I'm tired. I've been winterizing everything for days. I've been sweeping my cement pad because if we're gonna have a real freeze tonight and I don't want the snow to turn into slate sleet sleet and the horses walk on it break a leg and then then I got to put them down I've been wrapping every pipe all the plumbing it's a lot a lot a lot a lot shoveling snow yeah but it's a good experience it makes me I want to do a whole video about connecting with nature oh it went off I should turn off this one look how quiet it'll get sort of connecting with nature also is connecting with yourself is a real huge indication 
of how quick you're going to get into ketosis. But if you line everything up and you're eating enough fat and it's quality food and your protein is moderate to low and you're breathing and you're walking, you're exercising the right way and you're not fasting anymore and you can poop every day to get that excess estrogen out or any other toxic waste products, waste stuff, wasteful stuff, toxins out of your body. If you ground yourself, you'll be shocked how quick you bounce into ketosis. It's the difference from getting into ketosis where your body's using fat as fuel and not eating itself or eating, waiting for the carbs. It can happen within weeks, but those people are so open-minded. They're so ready. Not like, oh, I got to give up coffee. Oh, I hate exercising. Oh, I don't like to eat that food. There's a woman today, sweetheart. I mean, I got to make fun of people because life is so stupid right now. I got to make jokes sometimes, but super sweet. She understands what's going on in the world today. Not that many people get it, but the one thing is, is that she didn't like her grass fed meat tasted weird. I've heard this before and I think it's because people are used to meat that has been fattened up with corn or soy and it just doesn't taste as good. I said, I don't care. That's what your body can handle. She would have a histamine response. Like I mentioned to the grass fed grain finished comment below. Tell me if you guys are struggling with getting into ketosis. Obviously I have a course where I teach people how to do this more in depth. It's a monthly subscription based course. I offer consultations. You can go to stephanieperson.com. My Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. Facebook fan page is Stephanie the Business Person. And I'm out because now I gotta edit this stupid video. I mean, it's not stupid, it's kind of cool, but peace. <laughs>